I've been gone for seven years. I walked around downtown for 10 minutes today, and I overheard an older couple say I was the ugliest lesbian they'd ever seen. <laughs> I've been using both bathrooms all day. <laughs> it is awesome to be back in New Bern, I think I know every single person in this room. Yeah! And I tell you, I had a few of y'all offer me uh, rooms to stay, uh, and I'm telling you, I should have took y'all up on it, because I am in the worst motel in the world. Oh, um, I'm staying in the smallest motel room ever built in the state of North Carolina. Oh, my motel room is so small, there's not even a number on my door, there's a fraction. <laughs> I'm in room 11 sixteenths. <laughs> I can sit on the toilet and answer the door. Oh. <laughs> Swipe the key card a little too hard and rip the shower curtain. <laughs> Had some spicy Chinese food before I got here, went back to the room, drank a Red Bull, farted and busted the window. <laughs> Shouldn't even be called a motel room, it should be called a motel world. Y'all need to be drunker. Right here, because I'm telling you, I am 33% funnier if you're hammered. It's been clocked. I got one of the claws right, there you go. One person went, when does the comedy start? It's great to be back here, man. I drove up here from Florida, drove up on I 95 North. Why are you applauding I-95 North? I got into Newton Grove, I hit a pothole so big it fixed my car. Thank you. Does anyone ever have comedy here? This looks like everybody's here. It's like a bomb shelter. Okay, when, it's okay. When does the bus get back? We're ready to go. This place is awesome, man. I think I picked tobacco here once. <laughs> This looks like Cruella DeVille's basement. <laughs> it's great to be back. Spent a lot of time on the road. It's in Myrtle Beach performing a couple weeks ago. Thank you. You from South Carolina? I will talk slower. Love South Carolina. Pretty girls in Myrtle Beach. There's some ugly ones too. I seen a girl so ugly when she walked in front of my car, my check engine light came on. <laughs> That's an ugly woman when you're talking to Stop! <laughs> While I was down there, they had two dozen shark attacks. I did not go swimming. We got sharks in St. Augustine where I live too, but we just have nurse sharks. They don't bite you. They just swim up and take your blood pressure and your temperature. <laughs> then they all stand around smoking cigarettes talking about what an asshole you are. Am I right, nurses? Nurses don't get enough credit, man. I feel a lot safer with you guys there. They would allow you to swim in Myrtle Beach, but you had to wear a shark repellent device when you went in the water. And what this thing would do, it would emit a high frequency and it would repel the sharks. And you see, I don't need shark repellent because I have it built in. <laughs> if I'm in the water and I see a shark anywhere near me, my body will automatically emit a brown cloud in the water around me. I'm scaring me from the sharks too! No. I'm 53 years old. That's, that's just how it is when you get my age. Got a birthday coming up. I'll be 54 next month. Down. <laughs> Went to the doctor, you know, he gave me my checkup. He said, you know, your blood pressure is kind of high. What's your normal daily intake of caffeine like? I said, well, I'm pretty much going to be out. <laughs> I, I shot Red Bull every day. I just Red Bull five hour energy. I, I, I don't need it. So the blood pressure medicine they prescribe me is Quaaludes. <laughs> For you young people, that would be Ambien. <laughs> young people don't know what Quaaludes 
ago. I did this joke the other night, and a girl in the front row went, Quaalude, my mama drove a Honda Quaalude in college. <laughs> No, sugar, she didn't. <laughs> Starting to forget stuff. Things are changing. Last year, when I turned 53, I lost two inches off my height. Not for anything medical. Just got tired of lying about it. <laughs> hey, I went to school in Craven County. I went all through high school saying I was five foot thirteen. <laughs> No one found this unusual. <laughs> Starting to not remember things as well. The other day I was putting deodorant on and I put it on one pit, then got distracted and forgot to put it on the other one. All day long I thought somebody stinky was following me. <laughs> what the hell is that stink? Smells like garlic and MTV. How I can really tell I'm getting older about what's in my gig bag. Most people know I was in a band for 20 some years and I used to have cool stuff in my gig bag, man. Rolling papers, condoms, maybe a little KY jelly. <laughs> now I got Visine, Rolaids, and Preparation H. <laughs> Came in late the other night and accidentally brushed my teeth with the Preparation H. <laughs> Gave a whole new meaning to the term shit eating grin. <laughs> Worst part about this story is I still have toothpaste on my butthole. <laughs> you know, I had another comedian that was supposed to open up for me, and I'm just so awesome he decided not to show. <laughs> You guys are going to leave like, hey, did you kill it? No, we murdered him. After two hours, we just killed him. Just got engaged. I know you guys are going, clearly she's visually impaired. Jealous ladies. It's my engaged face. I look like meatloaf got hit in the face with a summer sausage. She's pretty awesome, man. She is a horrible driver. She is the only person I've ever been on the freeway with where people in front of us honk the horn at her. She constantly complains about how I drive. We were downtown the other day. She said, don't go by the fountains. Whenever I hear that water, it makes me have to pee. I said, what happens when you hear a dump truck? <laughs> That's a valid question, ladies. <laughs> Most people nowadays meet on dating websites or dating apps where you can like look at the pictures and fill out all the parameters. Me and my girl, we met the old-fashioned way while she was still married to her ex-husband. <laughs> I can't say that my grandmama just met her new boyfriend on a dating website for older people. It's called CarbonDating.com. <laughs> That joke was for you, Anne. You and Freddie. They've been married since, well, shit, the Big Bang. <laughs> me and my girl, we've been together so long now, she treats me like one of the animals. When she's introducing me, she's like, this is my boyfriend, Doug. He's a rescue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like it when you get like one applaud, they go. <laughs> we like half that joke. When I first started dating her, she told me she had four children. When I first started dating her, she said, look, I want you to treat my children just like they're your own. So from day one, I have ignored them. <laughs> She comes home and like, how's the kids? I'm like, what kid? <laughs> She's a mortician. I wish this was a joke, but it's not. She went to college. Yeah. 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 It's weird. I hate it. It's kind of like going to school to be a doctor, but instead of pre-med, it's pre-dead. <laughs> I need to work on more material for that, because that's about the only joke I have for that. 
Susiah, man. She's, uh, like I said, she has four children. I'd like to share some information with you guys in case you ever go to Florida. It is illegal in the state of Florida to set a child on fire. <laughs> hey, around here, as long as you have a fire extinguisher within 50 feet, it's all good. <laughs> Trying to help with their scholastic development. Her 14-year-old daughter, Gracie, came up to me the other day. She goes, hey, Doug, what's a bicentennial? I said, well, it's just like a regular one, but it likes boy and girl centennial. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk to the children anymore. <laughs> she has a uh, thing that she's been doing with her friends where uh, they go to this thing called painting with a flare. Have you guys ever heard of this, ladies? Painting and drinking is what it is. What they do is, yeah, yeah. What is it? Wine and what? Wine and dine? Wine and design. Yeah, that's just even more red there. <laughs> Why is the sign? <laughs> Painting and drinking. This is what it is. They take them to a studio and they set up the easels. I got a little news for you, ladies. Let me share a little something with you. After four margaritas, it ain't art no more. <laughs> it should be called hit directly in the ass with a paintbrush. It's not what it's <laughs> She came home the other night. Just as drunk as $38 on her debit card would get <laughs> She came in the front door with that wet ass painting and hit every piece of furniture through the house into the kitchen with this painting. She comes into the kitchen, she goes, hey honey, I'm gonna show you my new painting. I have to hurry or I'm going to pee on my flip-flop. <laughs> Shit, I lost a flip-flop. <laughs> okay! Honey! <laughs> I had to crack silent. Okay! This painting! It's a painting! A five!
That's the one person I don't know here. <laughs> don't think I know you. Okay, sit down. <laughs> it's okay, you can do whatever you want. So. Cut her off. That's all right, I'm just kidding. That's my sister. I didn't realize that I missed North Carolina so much. I first got here at 3 o'clock, I saw black marks in the freeway and smell warehouser. I'm home. Now all I need is an ex-wife or ex-girlfriend to beat the shit out of me and I'll feel right at home. There's a couple people in the audience that goes, I can make that happen with this phone right here. When I moved to Florida, I moved to Florida about uh, seven years ago. When I first moved to Florida, I lived with a stripper. Because when you have this many tattoos, it's mandatory in that state. <laughs> Strippers are cool, man, but they don't have daily coping skills like the rest of us. Even little stuff like dishes you can throw her off. I said for one time, I said, look, Ferrari. <laughs> this is a dirty dish. When you see this, pick it up, wash it, and put it away. She said, yeah, but I have babies. I said, I will be washing these dishes! <laughs> I couldn't take her anywhere, man. Everywhere I took her, she wanted to show everybody what a good dancer she was. And I'm the average white guy, okay? We have one dance, and it's called the gorilla. And it's like this. That's all we got. Maybe a little bit of this. Maybe a little bit of this once in a while. That's it. But what does every chick do when she starts drinking tequila and doing shots of Jaeger? She does the button to the crotch dance. <laughs> She started doing that to me, and I couldn't even do the gorilla anymore. I had to switch up and do the T-Rex. <laughs> As you can see, I'm a very gifted dancer. I'll tell you what, I miss the hillbillies is what I miss. I thought that this was the only place that had hillbillies. We got them down there in Florida, too, y'all. Let me tell you what. Hold on, sugar. <laughs> This is my hour! You can talk later! I'm sure you're on port release or something, so just shut up. She got something on her ankle, yo? First week I moved to Florida, I pulled into my driveway and a huge truck went by. Must have been a C71 million truck. Six foot high tires. Bull horns coming out the hood, a set of truck nuts hanging off the hitch. Oh, yeah. And in the back window was a big banner that said Redneck. I was thinking, thanks for clearing up that mystery. <laughs> I was thinking it might be a Jew. Maybe a Chinese guy going, oh, I'm a Redneck, woo! You want to smoke some weed with me in a black guy? <laughs> Hey, what's a Chinese guy's eyes look like when he gets hot? <laughs> oh, that's some dank, I wanna fight it! <laughs> they got a lot of stuff down here in Florida. I moved to a big city from here. They got a lot of stuff we didn't have around here. I know you guys said you heard of it, but I'd never heard of Redbox. I'd never seen this before when I moved to Clearwater. I was with a woman one night and she goes, hey, what do you say we stay in tonight and watch some movies? Wanna hit a Redbox? I thought she was suffering some sort of chafing. I said, you know, if it's red, maybe we should lay off on it for a couple of days. That could be a sign of something serious. She said, no, silly, DVDs come out of a red box. I'd like to see Braveheart <laughs> and the fifth element. <laughs> you. you guys okay over here? <laughs> a couple of y'all give me that look like you're still paying off your student loans. I can't say nothing. I've been paying on student loans for 25 years and I didn't even go to college. <laughs> Thank you. They got a game down there in Florida I've never seen before either. A little disturbing. 
It's a game where you take a bean bag and you throw it onto a piece of plywood with a hole in it. And this game is called Cornhole! Yeah, we got that game around here too, but it's played a lot differently. No bean bag. No plywood. No winner. You gotta let me get these jokes out, baby. You can help me after the show. Let me finish the jokes. It's okay. You've been saying you'll show up for the last 20 minutes. Were we married once or some shit? I don't care. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That's my that's my opening act, ladies and gentlemen. Just because I'm home doesn't mean I don't have to work for it. Thank you. Oh shit, now we have two. <laughs> now we have two of them! <laughs> like a vagina conspiracy. <laughs> That's a weird word. Vagina. It, it doesn't even sound dirty to me. It sounds high tech. Stop! Stop! Stop. Stop. Thank you. It sounds, it sounds high tech to me. It doesn't even sound dirty. Whenever I read an article, it just it sounds like some sort of computer part or like a hybrid car or something. Could you see that? New from Chrysler, the vagina. What can we do to put you in a new vagina today? We have used vaginas, the cougar. How much does a new vagina cost? Well, there really is no price. Once you get one, you pay every month for the rest of your life. Old dude in the front just nodded his head, but that's the first thing he said I agree with. <laughs> what color vaginas do you sell? We sell all colors, but if you buy a black vagina and mistreat it, it will cut you. <laughs> that's not stereotyping, ladies and gentlemen, that's empowerment. You don't hit a woman, she'll fuck you up, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. The depth of quality of the new Chrysler vagina is as vast as an ocean. Except for every month was a shark week. <laughs> I'm glad you like that one. <laughs> the table in the front just went, that was worth five dollars. <laughs> Disclaimer, do not park your vagina too close to another one or it will act up the same time every month. <laughs> I gotta stop that joke right there. Ladies, is that true? If you guys get together for a while, will y'all sync up? Yeah. That is like alien technology, right? <laughs> you get a bunch of guys together, we're not all gonna fart it. Yeah, we will. <laughs> That's pretty much how we greet each other around here. Where are you from? Vansboro. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> Princeton. <laughs> I just like it when I just like it when y'all laugh the whole room though. You guys like bodyguards or like bouncers or something? No? I'm being nice, I'm not being no kill me or nothing. The guy's like, we're gonna whip your ass after the show. When I got to uh, when I got to uh, south of the border area, I stopped at the Starbucks down there and got me something to drink. Turns out that uh, all the Starbucks in the uh, south of the border area have someone that speaks sign language there for their hearing impaired customers. I was not aware of this policy. And a very attractive young lady started speaking sign language to me. I started speaking it back to her. I don't speak sign language. <laughs> so it was just stupid. She was like, hi, welcome to Starbucks. I was like, hey, can I have some coffee? <laughs> she said, how are you feeling today? I said, I'm doing okay. She said, you look like a five shot vente. I said, I think that would hurt my stomach. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to be hell and killer to understand this sign language. Two things I'm 
learn about sign language today? First thing I learned about it is I will never be smart enough to speak it. Second thing I learned is if I do this long enough, it actually looks like I might be saying something. <laughs> the deaf guy in the back going, Tarantula, but trying to pineapple, what the hell's he saying? Still got that one guy going, when does the comedy start? <laughs> it's great to be back in New Bird. There's a lot of things different. Yeah. Looks like you guys are some of the toughest people I've ever seen in my life. That hurricane was bad. I'm so glad that you guys made it through. Man. <laughs> I, uh, I've been through a few of them, and I tell you what, it does not, it does not go away easy, and I got so much respect for you guys. And I just, uh, Wish I could have. Wish I could have changed it, but I couldn't. This is not your cue to talk more. This is not. Have a seat, sugar. It's gonna be okay. How much have you drank? Because we want to give you more. Say what? See, usually you're talking so loud that we can't hear anything else. Now you're so quiet. I guarantee after this exhibit, they won't want to be there. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, is she with you guys? No. <laughs> the dude's like, no. <laughs> Do they drug test you for any reason? Anyone? <laughs> now we got two of them. The two of them again. So, back to the comedy. Yeah, I tell you what, I got a good life, man. I got a, I got a great fiance and everything, but I was in a bad relationship for about eight and a half years. <laughs> a crazy person, kind of like doing two tours in the psycho army. I broke up with her in a text message. She was dangerous. That was the only way you could do it. It's like, hey, it's been real, it's been fun, but it ain't been real fun. I'm done. LOL, send. <laughs> I thought she was the coolest chick I ever met on our first date. She told me she was bi. I thought she meant bisexual. Turned out she was bipolar. <laughs> we were either having sex, she was screaming at me or crying. One time, all three at once, it was hot. <laughs> Sadly, she was diagnosed as schizophrenic with ADHD. She'd hear voices, but she wouldn't pay any attention to them. <laughs> Oh shit, we have smart people here. <laughs> Usually I do that job and people go. <laughs> she used to get mad at me that when she would get drunk and fall down, I wasn't quick enough to catch her before she hit the ground. Ladies, when you wear them high heel shoes, you fall down at light speed, okay? I'm pretty quick. I got pretty good reflexes. She's like, hey, baby. It's like I was in slow motion. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> now, but I'm a non-drinker. I've been sober for seven years. <laughs> Thank you. There's always one person in the audience that goes stupid. <laughs> I hated quitting drinking at first. I didn't think I was going to be able to do this job or any job. But I tell you what, there's one thing I like about quitting drinking, and I noticed it right away. There's a lot less piss in the corner of my bedroom. <laughs> Come on. Let's see, we have some other bedroom pissers in here as well. It's hard for you ladies to do it. It's like, where's my sock drawer? I'm going to pee in the hamper. <laughs> How many tequila drinkers we got in here? <laughs> I know you drink tequila mouth of the south. <laughs> you drink tequila? You ever had a, you know what a tequila abduction is? It's just like an alien abduction. You wake up the next day, you can't remember nothing. Ooh, your ass might feel a little funny. <laughs> All jokes aside, 
right, there's some crazy stuff going on in the world, and it's so good that we can get together and have a laugh like this, isn't it? Yeah. Look at all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world, man. Crazy politics, terrorism, sexual harassment. Yeah. You guys notice this never happens every year until pumpkin spice latte comes back? <laughs> that stuff is evil, man. Everything's got to be politically correct. You can't even discipline your children anymore. My mama used to invite people over to whoop my ass. <laughs> she beat me whenever she got her hands on. One time she beat the hell out of me with a rolled up newspaper. The dog thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Do y'all know a chihuahua is the only living mammal that can run full blast and shit at the same time? <laughs> My ex-wife, she used to have a chihuahua. <laughs> Went to her house one time, I had a soft taco in my truck from Taco Bell, put some Diablo sauce on it, and gave it to her chihuahua. <laughs> Ten minutes later, it walked to the middle of the living room, barked and shit at the same time. <laughs> She just seen the look on his face, he was like, that was a unique sensation! <laughs> just got a new job not long ago. Thank you. He's cool, man. I took him home, he was kind of sick or something. He's like, had like cough or kennel cough or something. So I took him to the bed. Turns out my dog smokes weed. <laughs> so now I buy my weed from a dog. Thank you. I like where I live down there. We just moved to a, where we moved to in Palm Coast. It's kind of like the fountain of youth because all my neighbors are in their 90s. Can't wait for the neighborhood pickup game to start. I want to be like LeBron, you know? <laughs> my neighbor that lives right next to me has been telling me since the day I moved in that he is smarter than me, in better health than me, and going to live longer than me, and he's 79 years old and I'm 53. So the other day when he went to play golf, I broke in his house and moved all his furniture around. <laughs> now he thinks he has Alzheimer's. <laughs> Kiss my ass, Ralph. <laughs> you don't know who you're messing with. <laughs> on the other side of where we live on the cul-de-sac is an older lady who's got a 120-pound pit bull that barks at me constantly. I found out from one of the other neighbors that that dog was actually in the maximum security prison for the Paws for Prisoners Obedience Project. So I just threw a couple packs of cigarettes over the fence and now we're friends. <laughs> he, pays the, he pays the other dogs to bark at me now. At the end of the street, we got a 97-year-old man living down there. He uh, used to be a sanitation driver in Jacksonville. He's the sweetest man in the world. Mr. Willie. He's a nice man, but he can't remember my name because he's so old. He called me Hippie. What's up, Hippie? <laughs> Hippie looks like Caitlyn Jenner walking down the street. The Bible says you can't have a camel toe and a camel tail at the same time, Hippie. <laughs> Find Jesus, Hippie. He's always trying to be helpful. His 75 and 77 year old son just moved back in with him. He said, Hippie, they're trying to find themselves still. I think if you're 75 years old and you ain't found yourself yet, you ain't meant to be found. <laughs> I was, well, he's always trying to be helpful around the neighborhood. He, you know, he's always talking to us. I was walking by his house the other day with my dog. My nose is running. I got real bad allergies. He comes out and he goes, what's wrong, Hippie? You got a cold or something? I said, no, oh, Mr. Willie, I got real bad allergies. He said, well, I got some Claritin up in here, Hippie. You want some Claritin? <laughs> yeah, old people are. I was like, yeah, that'd be great. So he goes in. He comes out with the pills. I took the two pills. I felt different immediately. And as I'm standing there talking to him, I'm looking at the blister packs, and it didn't say Claritin. <laughs> it said Cialis. <laughs> now I realize Claritin and Cialis sounds a little alike. They do two totally different things to the body. Y'all got any idea how embarrassing it is to walk your dog with a snotty nose and a boner? <laughs> I think my dog was embarrassed. <laughs> you guys are pretty awesome. Y'all yeah. should do this for
professionally. Y'all want to go to Road Women? Yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody's a bales for all the next month. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, that's the same crowd from New York. That's awesome. You're what? All the way. I just love it the way you go. You're with me all the way. <laughs> Words of encouragement from my heckler. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool if you had a heckler? You suck, I hate you! But you're looking good and your hair is nice. <laughs> that one funny! Would you like to stay at my house? <laughs> I literally had like everybody in the room offered me to stay at their house. Literally. So what I'm gonna go is I'm going to everybody's house for 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't even know if that was English. <laughs> Kind of like, well, that sounded like whoa! <laughs> so it sounded like a language, but it's not one that's from this planet. We colonized Mars, the rubber lands. Oh no, here's an earthquake. What's out of my side? I was home! <laughs> we need an interpreter. Get the chick from New Bern. <laughs> what did she say? Uh, it sounds like they're saying welcome and uh, they have really good barbecue. Not even really, it's really true. It is great to be back. You guys look like you guys look like you got a town under control. Is there a lot of comedy going on in New Bern? Yeah. Half of you said yes, half of you said no. Somebody's lying. She's with you, isn't she? Because I can tell you guys are not making eye contact with her. Do I want to keep you happy? I don't think anything can keep you happy. No, but she goes, she goes, yeah. Can you keep me here in New Bern? Uh, that's been done before I made it out. <laughs> I like everybody's going, take me! I actually doing this full time now for nine years, but I had a job for a while, a part time job for a while, because I'm so good at this. I was driving a taxi. I figured if I'm going to look like I'm on parole, I might as well have a job I could get if I was. One day this huge guy got in my cab smoking a blunt, smoking a joint. I said, look man, not only is that illegal, but it's inappropriate and rude to get up and you're with that thing. And when we get done smoking it, you got to get out. <laughs> he got out of that cab, I was legally retarded for three hours. <laughs> you know you're high when you get out of a car and try to put the kickstand down. <laughs> I was so high, you could have blindfolded me with a guitar string. <laughs> I leased my cab from a guy from Poland. He'd been here about 17 years and he still couldn't hardly understand it. He was not impressed that I was a comedian. He used to tell me every day, Hey, Doc, you're full of the bullshit, okay? Here is the bowl, here is the shit, this you. <laughs> When I first started driving the cab, they said, you know, you go pick up a lot of prostitutes and hookers and stuff, and they're going to offer to trade out services instead of paying you. I picked up a whole bunch of them. They never offered me nothing. It kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. <laughs> I had a couple of them in there one day. I said, hey, did you guys want to trade some out instead of paying me, huh? They said, no, we'll pay you. <laughs> bunch of uppity bitches. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing I can do that taught me to be an expert at being able to tell precisely on the globe where someone's from just by hearing their accent a little bit. Today I went to Harris Teeter when I walked in, I heard a guy say to me, Hey, where's the coffee? I want some coffee. Obviously he's from the whole bucket. <laughs> you guys been to whole bucket lately? That place is a redneck Leonard Skinner wouldn't play there. <laughs> I was actually good looking in Hoboken. <laughs> I know! <laughs> Y'all live in a city where I'm good looking? You need to move. <laughs> I was walking down the street, I kept hearing, dang, he's hot, and that was just the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Only two hours left, people. <laughs> We have a lot of 
that LGBTQ gay people in Florida. I have absolutely nothing against that. I think that homophobia is stupid. We should treat everybody with dignity. So, we had gay people when I was growing up around here, but when you're from down south, you can't come out of the closet. You gotta come out of the outhouse. <laughs> or if you real big, the back 40. I can't say that. My karate teacher was gay. After five years of taking karate lessons, got me a rainbow belt. <laughs> I tell you what, the hardest one to earn was that brown belt. <laughs> I had a lot of questions after that belt test, <laughs> mostly about myself. <laughs> That's what I love about Florida, man. Florida accepts anybody, no matter what religion, sexual orientation. You guys ought to hear the military advertisements. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Coast Guard! <laughs> That pretty well, though. <laughs> Almost like I might have a little sugar in my britches. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, I got a lot of respect for gay guys, but I'll tell you what, if you have too many penises in your life, that's bound to cause trouble. I only have one, and it's pretty much ruined my life. <laughs> you won't believe the stuff this thing's got me into over the years. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's one or two women around that say it's ruined their life as well. <laughs> That's a weird joke to say, but I don't think I'd tell me. <laughs> it's just weird to perform in front of you guys because, you know, my whole comedy career has been out west and north and south, not around people I know, and all these people in the audience are like, this is a good cross section of his insanity. <laughs> This definitely proves that all that shit we've been saying about him all these years is true. He's, he's fucked up. I agree. <laughs> I never aspired to be a comedian. I never wanted to be one. I always, you know, thought I was going to be Andy Van Halen. And there's a guy here tonight that is the reason why I'm a comedian. His name's Gary Shelton. So give me a big hand for my buddy Gary Shelton. This is how arrogant I was when I first started playing, just first started doing comedy. I, I got a job for 51 weeks on the road. I got a job doing stand-up, and I, when I left, I went to Gary, and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this for a year, come back, and I'm going to have an HBO special. And he went, yeah, okay. <laughs> I came back 51 weeks later, knocked on his door, and said, I will never have an HBO special! <laughs> and he went, yeah, I know. I appreciate Gary for getting me into this. I appreciate it. It's a lot better to play music, I'll tell you that. A lot less pregnancies. <laughs> I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> Are you recording me? Your phone won't record that long, will it? Really? Recording two of them? Or is that a that looks like a sponge? What? This is gonna be worth forty-two cents in ten years. <laughs> I'm getting ten dollars in a red bowl for the show, so that should be worth it. Give it up for the give it up for the city state, man. I called him up and I said, hey, I want to do a comedy show. He said, you're a comedian? I said, yeah, I'm an absolute tour comedian. He said, what's your name? I said, Doug Kane. He said, I never heard of you. I said, I didn't say I was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never say that. How do you heard of me? I met Nick Sparks one time. He goes, haven't you heard of me? I was like, yes, I've heard of you. <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an asshole, is he? All right, fine, yes! Yeah. <laughs> they turn on you that quickly! It's okay, though. All right. Spent a lot of time on the road. I was, uh, actually, every now and then I get a chance to open up for somebody famous. Got to uh, open up for Cat Williams. I don't know if you guys know Cat Williams. <laughs> yeah, I wish.
wish I could be that enthused. Uh, <laughs> I flew into town and he canceled the show an hour before the, before the show. <laughs> yeah, it turned out that he'd gotten drunk with a bunch of his buddies and wanted to show them how tough he was, so he went into a Target and slapped a cashier. Showed him how tough he was. That's like one step up from slapping a cashier at Bed Bath & Beyond, you know? You want to show me your tough, Cat Williams? Go slap a cashier at the dollar store. You will get your ass whooped. By a tall, husky lesbian named Pat. Hi, welcome to the dollar store. I have to inform you I'm a convicted felon. Did you find everything okay? Words of affirmment from my heckler. Was that you that said that? I rolled. You can't be quiet, can you? You can't, I bet you can. I bet you lay there at night and go, ah! Are you from Newburgh? Where are you from? Colorado. You're from Colorado. I'm there in three weeks. I'm going to look on the post office wall and see if there's a picture of me on there. How long have you been in Newburgh? Just let me answer the, ask the question. Okay? Where, how long have you been in Newburgh? Eight and a half years. Eight, I moved seven years ago? Clearly, I'm scared clear of you. What would be legal then? What brought you to Newburgh? Uh, Other than your voice. I, I don't know what that means. I you You did what? Another, I, did you hear, did you understand that? I didn't hear that, that was not a language. <laughs> That's not fucking English. I need a translator. I need a translator for the translator. Oh, she, how did you understand that? It's okay. It's okay, every now and then my show just comes to a screeching halt. Okay, this is, this is this is my life, man. This is, this is what we do. I appreciate everybody. I even, I even appreciate you, Colorado. Thank you for coming yeah. to the show. Uh, 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 I want you to leave happy. When you leave, I want you to, after the show, I want you to go, yeah. You guys want to hear a dirty joke? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I don't sound like dirty jokes. Come on. Actually, uh, it is kind of dirty. I, uh, I think a lot of jokes about the motel rooms and stuff I stay in, but I move it up a little bit in the comedy world, get some better gigs, obviously. <laughs> I was in Baton Rouge before a few months ago. I stayed at the nicest hotel I have ever seen in my life. Right when I walked in, there was a huge gothic desk and a guy in a tuxedo. He said, hello, I am the concierge. Do you have a reservation? What? He said, I am a concierge. I said, what's a concierge? He said, I take care of business at the hotel. I get things done. I am a concierge. He <laughs> said, so it sounds like you might be an asshole. <laughs> Possibly a fox <laughs> fuck out. <laughs> Most definitely a muslim fuck out. <laughs> He was a concierge and asked how the cook suck in the fuck yeah. <laughs> and I know what you guys are thinking right now. You're thinking that is the dumbest thing you've heard another human being say in a thousand years. Yeah. You wait, you wait. Two weeks from now, three weeks, and you guys have completely forgot about me and forgot about this show. You'll be in Home Depot or Staples or something. One of the employees will walk by and you go, excuse me, sir, could you tell me where that? He's going to go, I'm on my break. You guys are going to go, that guy is a cult stuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just comes out, doesn't it? Colorado's going to be sleeping tonight with a boyfriend or whatever, pterodactyl, or anything. She's going to wake up in the middle of the night and go, cult stuck out. <laughs> They're going to go, what did you say? She's going to say something in another language. What else would it
So are we all drunk yet? <laughs> no, no, Colorado. Are you with them? I know that guy. I'm with all of them. You're with all of them. That's why they all won't make eye contact with you. That's your woman? Well, even though that's highly misogynistic, would you fucking do something? <laughs> Colorado, I'm just messing with you, but it's interesting how you think that this is all good. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm popular! I'm like, no. We have this thing in Florida called a Baker Act. You know what that is? That's like if somebody's acting crazy or something, you call the cops and go, Baker Act! And they take them away. <laughs> down here, they don't have that. They call that Vance for us. Down there. <laughs> <laughs> I love Vanceboro, I love it. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne said, I'm going to kick your ass, I love Vanceboro. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start another joke, Colorado, shut up. <laughs> I, I have to, like, edit her as we go, you know. When I first moved to Florida, my buddy said, old people move to Florida. Only old people move to Florida. That's not true, but old people move to Naples, Florida. You guys been to Naples? I love saying Naples. You know, I just like saying Naples a few times because it sounds like nipples. Naples, 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 Naples. Naples. So you get there quickly. You gotta go through a town called Punta Gorda. I like saying that. Punta Gorda. Punta Gorda. I looked it up. Loosely translated, that means uh, pumpkin pussy. So. Not quite sure about the dialect, but I bet the real estate agents don't say that when they're selling your house. Yet. The house is on 2,500 square feet, uh, with a half acre, and the town was named after an orange vagina. <laughs> Naples, Florida, old people. I went to the beach in Naples, Florida, and there was a whole bunch of really old people laying around with really small bathing suits. For a second, I thought they were all debris from some sort of disaster. <laughs> There was a, uh, that night at the show, there was a four-top table right in front of the stage, and their combined age was about 740. <laughs> I got halfway through my first joke, and one of them went, Who is this terrible woman? <laughs> I made one little joke about pacemakers and microwave ovens, and after the show, there was seven of them in the parking lot going, Let's kick it up! <laughs> I haven't been late since the Carter administration. I'm pissed off! I don't know what it is about older women that like me, and I'm not talking 30, 40, 50. I'm talking 90, 80, 90-year-old women. I don't know what it is after the show. I walked outside, there was this woman standing there smoking that looked like she was a nurse in the Civil War, okay? <laughs> she was smoking, she was all really, she was real dark and tan, like she'd laid on the beach for like a decade. And she was smoking, but, hey, that's a hillbilly comedian, how you doing? Ha <laughs> ha You're pretty handsome there, hillbilly. Ha <laughs> You want to come have some chocolate martinis with us? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll bring a couple shots of insulin, I'll save your life. <laughs> she was with this other dude that looked equally as old. It was their first date. I was like, what are you going to do, die on your first <laughs> Did you bring your wallet? Yes, and I brought the defibrillator, too. <laughs> so she's talking to me, and I don't know if she's trying to get me to do a threesome or what, but I'm trying not to look at her straight in the eye, and I keep looking down. And she, she, thought it was, she thought it was looking at her feet. She goes, oh, you're a footman, huh? Look at this turquoise pedicure. Ah, look at that. Her big toe and little toe were almost touching. <laughs> I bet when she went to the salon of the Filipino 